Uh, you're with Julian on the brown note, untangling my headphones. Um, so when I, I, a while ago, I compared the current liberal at federal and and uh, state level, the liberal coalition governments. It's, it's like the last days of the Roman Empire, Caligula era. Um, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah. It's like <clears throat> they let them get away with this behaviour, and their natural inclination is to feather their own nests all the time. They're only in government to, to pass public money onto private hands anyway, and uh, they all, they're on a gravy train for the rest of their lives. Even if they actually lose their $300,000 a year job, they get given one by the government in the private sector anyway for next to no reason, um, or tender or anyone else being you know given a looking for it. So they're bit jobs for life. Now we've got the um, car park rotting scandal which is the latest in an endless stream of financial scandals uh, this time it's the federal government uh, and labor of calls it a weaponized version of the sports rot scandal and it all ties back to bridget mckenzie quite nicely at the end of this um i'm going to read out what the guardian said uh, which is a good overview not one of the 47 commuter car park sites so these are if you know if you've got They've, they've tried to improve transport infrastructure by putting car parks next to uh, places where people can drop off their car for free and go and you know get next door to a train station or a bus or so on. Uh, not one of the 47 commuter car park sites promised by the coalition at the 2019 election was selected by the infrastructure department with projects worth $660 million of taxpayers' money hand-picked by the government on the advice of MPs and candidates instead. Uh, that's the conclusion of a scathing Australian National Audit Office, ANAO, report released on Monday, yesterday, which found that the department's administration of the program was not effective and identification of projects was not demonstrably merit-based. Uh, the infrastructure department has rejected the conclusions, arguing it is entitled to give funding to projects selected by the government and promised as election commitments. This is all they have, is to say that the government announced these projects so they were election commitments. Not that they were the right selected places to build these car parks, just the government announced them in their campaign. The Minister's Office advised that it would then go through the spreadsheets with the Prime Minister's Office and Deputy Prime Minister's Office ahead. These are the spreadsheets of the proposed uh, places where they were going to put them. Ahead of a related meeting between the Minister for Urban Infrastructure and Prime Minister, the ANAO found the projects had been identified in part through Minister's Offices canvassing the views of 27, uh, 23 coalition MPs, Senators and the candidates, coalition candidates, for six electorates then held by Labour or the Centre Alliance. The department's approach to selecting commuter car park projects was not appropriate as projects had been selected by the government on a non-competitive, non-application-based process. So these were areas that hadn't even applied, very sports rorts. Uh, the ANAO concluded that the process for election projects was not designed to be open or transparent. Nationally, 70% of the car parks were in coalition held electorates and a further 10% were in six non-coalition held electorates where candidates views were canvassed i.e marginal seats one car park in a labor held electorate 300 meters from a boundary was incorrectly recorded in the project selection documents and the department system has been located in a coalition electorate and the funding was announced by a coalition mp some 64% of projects were in Melbourne, two and a half times the number in Sydney, despite Infrastructure Australia rating Sydney's roads as the busiest. Uh, Labor's seat of Lindsay, a key marginal seat, was won by the coalition and received three car parks. It rejected the department's conclusion that the majority of the projects had been selected as election commitments, noting that 27 had been approved before the government went into caretaker mode. Uh, but the ANAO found the sites had been approved by the government between January and July, some 38 affected in written agreement between the Prime Minister to a request from ministers and seven announced as election commitments. Um, this is beyond sports rorts. It's sports rorts on steroids, the uh, opposition, one of the opposition ministers said. The urban infrastructure minister, Paul Fletcher, 
Uh, so who benefits here? So $660 million is like six times the sports rorts amount that was uh, dished out into marginal seats. A bit on that in a minute. Um, this is astonishing. We just don't hold them accountable, so they do it again. They do it again. No one held them accountable for sports rorts, so they did it even bigger. Um, the amount of taxpayer money, not only are they buying votes by announcing all these projects in marginal seats or in um, in dodgy liberal-held seats to bolster their vote, i.e. P- paying for votes, but who is benefiting? Who is getting the money to build these car parks? Liberal donors and liberal friends. This is just a straight transfer of taxpayer money where they look at the economy of the country as one, a way of advertising themselves and getting re-elected, and two, transferring that money to their friends in the private sector. This is uh, it's a paradigm. It's, it's not an anomaly. It's continual. Look at the, the uh, corruption scandals with the state uh, Liberal Party, with uh, Gladys saying that she was OK to spend $250 million of taxpayers' money in pork barrelling to shore up liberal votes because that's the way that politics runs and she destroyed the paperwork for it as well. The corruption is off the charts and no one will hold them accountable. We get these stories in the media and they go away and no one ends up playing for it. Uh, we already had the sports rule affair called the McKenzie scandal, Bridget McKenzie, involving the sports Australia Community Sports Infrastructure Programme that engulfed Bridget McKenzie, then Minister for Sport, Uh, commencing in February 2019. The inquiry found there was overwhelming evidence the programme was used to gain political advantage. Nine out of the ten electorates receiving funding, or the most funding, were identified as marginal or targeted electorates. The committee said it faced significant obstruction in attempts to gather evidence. They bought that last election fraudulently by spending billions in taxpayers' money in marginal seats and in areas where their vote was low, and in um, having you know Clive Palmer in Queensland doing the same up there for them by spending eighty million dollars on advertising to attack uh, Labour, this isn't democracy. How do we have a democracy? Our last prime minister before Scott Morrison donated over a million dollars of his own personal money to get elected. How is it not like a banana republic to spend a million dollars of your own money to get elected? Um, funding a, a total totaling $102 million was approved for 684 projects, which were due to the large number and greater variety were assessed in three rounds. Mackenzie resigned from the cabinet as deputy leader in 2020 as a result of the scandal. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm including this because it's so funny. So Bridget McKenzie was uh, kicked out of her position in government because of the sports rort scandal, because Scott Morrison, who undoubtedly was behind the whole thing, needed to throw somebody under a bus again. He's running out of people to throw under buses. I wonder why no, no one's getting thrown under a bus lately. Do they have dirt on him? I think they do, you know, especially with... Um, Uh, the rape scandals going on there's obviously a lot of dirt that they all have on Scott Morrison because he's just not throwing people under the bus and that's not his way Um, but I like this in in January whilst in the wilderness Bridget McKenzie uh, a media report revealed she was in a relationship with Simon Benson the national affairs editor for the Murdoch Press it's such a cabal isn't it Um, now the thing is she's now back in the cabinet she had like two years in the wilderness and she's back. She's back on the front bench for the Nationals. She's back in because she's been reappointed by a man who lost his job for being caught having an affair with his staffer and getting her pregnant and um, being accused of sexually harassing a, a, a woman who is now back as leader and he's reappointed her when she was kicked out for the sports fraud scandal. It's absolutely amazing the meritocracy in this country there is even if we get rid of these people for corruption or bad behavior they just come back again if you don't think that christian porter can be prime minister of this country one day you haven't seen how the liberal party operate uh i just wanted to end on this because it was kind of telling during his ascent to the throne again uh bonking barnaby joyce told the outgoing people from the front bench in the national party that they would be replaced by people like Bridget McKenzie, 
who were favoured. Uh, and one of the match, Mr. Chester, one of the people that was removed, commented on the conversation that he had with the second most powerful person <coughs> in Australia and said the following. I wouldn't normally comment on private conversations, but I'm going to say the conversation I had with Barnaby Joyce was so incoherent yesterday, I couldn't actually explain what he was even trying to say to me, Mr. Chester said. People of Australia, brace yourself. There will be more conversations like that. He said about the, the sacked Deputy Prime Minister of Australia, who is once again Deputy Prime Minister of Australia, who was today fined £200 for not wearing a mask and being dobbed in in a petrol station. Ah. Anyway, uh, where are we? Uh, this is...